Welcome to the world united. Welcome to the world united. <clears throat> you should be seeing our next guest, next guest speakers. A couple that's a lot of fun. I mean, we met a few minutes ago and already we've been laughing. So wonderful people, Scott and Marla Berger are founders of the Tree of Life movement and creators of Intentional Stick, a spiritual tool that ignites the power of human intention. We are all seeking answers to life's question. Why am I here? They believe the answers live within each of us waiting to be unlocked. Their mission is to unify humanity through the intention stick for a global spiritual awakening, connecting us on a higher level and creating a community of connected souls capable of transforming the world. Since 2017, thousands of miracles have been recording, recorded as a result of the movement. And I also wanted to mention that um, Scott and Marla are part of the International Leadership Fellows, or they are International Leadership Fellows of Windsor Castle, and they've got two books being released next spring, in the spring of 2021. So I'm going to pass the baton over to Scott and Marla, and welcome. So you need to unmute, Scott. Oh, honor to be here. And uh, we're going to start you off with uh, a, just a two minute video for us, and then we'll start sharing the journey. <laughs> The Tree of Life movement didn't start out as a movement. It actually started out as a gift for my wife, Marla, going back almost seven years. The journey came to be because we say through our business, we found our purpose. We can always change out our words for whatever we feel we need at that moment, that day, that month, or all of this. Literally every time I switch out my intention, something along the lines of that happens. The most amazing things have actually happened in my life in all areas. I am cancer free. Surgery was completely successful and I feel so empowered by the decisions I made and this guiding intuition that I've really found in myself. This is not a tree of life foundation we've started. It's a tree of life movement. It's much bigger than you possibly could have ever dreamt or imagined. To fill themselves back up with what they're so depleted of, whether that is love or kindness or joy or gratitude or health or whatever that may be for that individual, because everyone in this world right now is walking a little bit. It's just miraculous and i know we keep using the word but it is it's all miracles everything's a miracle this is for everyone this isn't about age this isn't about gender this isn't about religion this is to unify all mankind this is to bring us back together as one <laughs> Good, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, Marla and I are so grateful to be here with you. And we just want to share all the light and love that we're feeling back to everyone that's watching this. And we want to give a special thanks to Dr. Ugandar and your incredible team uh, at the World Parliament of Spirituality and continuing on this beautiful journey of oneness. So our mission is to unify humanity through the intention stick for a global spiritual awakening ignited by the realization of the power held by human intention. Our purpose is to help shift consciousness by awakening people to the powers within themselves so that they can transform personal circumstances and create truly positive change in the world and ultimately bringing together and connecting all humanity as one. We created the intention stick as a spiritual tool with the vision to be gifted by humankind to help others, to serve others. So we would, we would love to take you on 
this beautiful journey of this spiritual tool and the tree of life movement. And, and normally if we were to start, start sharing our story, Dr. Uganda knows, and we, we may need a sleepover and a long weekend to get through this, but I'll keep it as brief as possible. So I'm going to take you back about 20, um, about nine years ago, it was our 21 year anniversary. And Marla and I have been designing jewelry around the world for 30 years. And I didn't know what to get or design for her for her anniversary. And I had the vision of the tree of life and that kept coming in just very powerful. So I said, that's it. And I designed this beautiful pendant with the tree of life on one side and all four of our children's names in Hebrew on the back side with the number 21. And I gave that to Marla. And she said it was the most beautiful gift I'd ever given her, not because of the jewelry aspect, but the spiritual meaning of the tree of life. And that she was able to wear all four of our children close to her heart. And she said, that's it. And I'm like, what? And she said, that's what I waited 21 years for. And I didn't get it at first. And she said, yes, we were blessed with a home, health, four beautiful children, a business. But she said that two souls are brought together in this lifetime for a bigger purpose and a divine reason. And the tree of life was it. And when she said that, it hit me like a lightning bolt. And at the same time, we came up with our mantra, changing the world one tree at a time, we become one. Because as we all know, there is no black, white, pink, yellow, brown. And when we remove the title, there is no Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Muslim. Our souls are the same. We are all the same. There is no one better in this world than anyone else. And there's no one worse than anyone, anyone else in this world. We just forgot. So when I saw that vision, she designed and surprised me with a bracelet with the tree of life. And we started designing different collections with the tree on one side and different causes and charities on the other sides, not just in the United States, but globally. And then actually four years ago to this day, we designed a collection for the Pope at the Vatican, helping all the refugee children around the world. So we say here, a Jewish family creates a collection for the Pope. It's not about religion, it's about humankind. And then the royal family in Windsor and London heard what we did and invited Marla and I with 23 other visionaries and world leaders on shifting consciousness and making change in the world for a better place. And that stay at the castle for four days was life-changing and miraculous. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I want to share the importance of this next part of the story and the journey. So as we were staying at the castle and talking about how to bring this beautiful world back together as one, which was incredible. And what was interesting, everyone was talking about the tree of life, but they didn't know it. And I was bouncing around like, we know what to do. We just launched a collection for the Pope. And my wife's telling me to settle down, breathe, listen, and you'll share at the end. So I'm like, okay, and got a little pouty. And I chimed in a little bit. And the night before last, we have a private tour of St. George's Cathedral. And at the very end of the tour, our tour guide brought us to the side and says, we do not take anyone here. We do not take the public here. And she brought us to these beautiful double red doors with gold imagery embossed on each door built in 1540. It's the queen's private entrance from the castle to the cathedral. And she said, on each door is the tree of life. And we're looking at each other and we're like, okay, we, we get the message. We know we're being guided. So we leave the cathedral, we go back for a reception. And the gentleman who invited us to the castle came up to us, which we did not know at the time, very spiritual, very religious, very intuitive. That's why we say, we cannot judge another. One, we're not judged. Who are we to look at someone and say, you don't look spiritual enough or you don't look religious enough? because he came up to Marl and I and said, last night, I had a vision of your tree and your tree encompassed the entire world. And underneath your tree, I saw hundreds of thousands of these beautiful white tents representing every person, every cause, every religion, everyone. As he shares with Marl and I, he says, this is not a tree of life foundation you have started. It is a tree of life movement. 
It is much bigger than you possibly could have ever dreamt or imagined. And Marla and I are looking at each other like, holy shift, because we knew in our hearts we were doing something right, but not of that magnitude. And when you follow your heart, it is never wrong. We just don't trust that this or the external tries to take us out of our path of light and love. So the next day, we're back in round circle, and he asked Marla and I to talk about the tree of life, which was an honor. And I started talking about what we just did the month before for the Pope. It's all about humankind. It's unifying. It's allowing people to become sustainable. I start talking about the tree of life, the, the evolution of consciousness, the blueprint of our souls, which is the tree of life, the, the evolution, or we say, it's not being better than anyone else in this world. It's being better than who we were yesterday. We're here to grow. We're here to learn. And then, of course, I start talking about laws of motion, law of physics, and uh, what, of course, we think about, we bring about. And I said, which led us to this. So at the time, the intention stick was in prototype. And Marla had presented it with me the month, or the month before for my birthday. And I'm going to share with you what took place. So also four years ago, after morning prayer, I go into morning meditation. And I had a vision of a tube, but I dismissed it, right? The messages are always in front of us. We just have to pay attention. So I dismissed it. A month later in morning meditation, I saw our tree being wrapped around the tube. And I'm like, okay, something's going on. And I come running out from our library and I said, Marla, something's going on. And at the same time, we both started receiving the same words, the same intentions. And it's very interesting. I'm going to read this to you. And no coincidences, we ended up receiving 22 words, 22 intentions, which of course is 1111. And what most people may know is there are 22 pyramids in the world, three are visible. There's 22 letters in the, hel in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 chromosomes between man and woman. The 23rd separates us. There are 22 levels of the ascension of the tree of life in Kabbalah. Our anniversary is December 22nd. I can go on and on with the 11, 11, and 22s. But what was interesting on this journey, we found out, according to Kabbalah, it wasn't 22 intentions or 22 words we received. Each one of these intentions have 72 different interpretations. So that one word, one intention is much more powerful than what it may mean to you. It's how you interpret it. And every one of these 22 intentions falls under the umbrella of the tree of life. So what I would love to do is I'm going to explain to you something very powerful that also we've all asked. We say for our entire lives, for millennia, we have asked the existential question of why am I here? And it is not, why am I here? It is, I am here, why? And these are the 22 answers that fall under the umbrella of the tree of life. And what I would love for everyone to do right now is just to close your eyes and just take a deep breath in to ground yourselves. And I'm gonna share these beautiful intentions with you. Believe. Faith, gratitude, mindful, be, let it be, love, light, blessed, peace, kindness, compassion, success, knowledge, trust, spiritual, happiness, Courage, laugh and joy, inspire, consciousness, and the two most important, even though these are all important, health and oneness. And these are the intentions we place inside the intention stick. And I want to share with you that going back also about four years ago, 
that Marla had a vision that the intention stick coming from pure love and pure intention would sweep the world like a beautiful tsunami, that everyone in the world would be wearing an intention stick in every language and in braille, and that we would all insert the word oneness at the same time. Because as most of us know, we do not need to die or transition to go to heaven. It's all around us. It's everywhere we are. It's within us all. We just have to start seeing that and believing that and trusting that and seeing the good in everything and everyone. It's just covered up with all the programming or fear or the religion or the politics or the ego. And what we have witnessed in the last four years has been miraculous. We've been witnessing stories from uh, tens of thousands from people shifting consciousness, people letting go of things that they've been carrying with them their whole lives, people filling themselves back up with the, what they've been so depleted of because we say we cannot possibly give what we do not have. We started witnessing physical healing and pain and sickness leaving people's bodies. And we cannot keep up with the stories and What's so amazing is that children from, like I said, the age of three years old to 90 years old, they're, they're understanding that this has nothing to do with a piece of jewelry. We say it's worn on the inside for your heart and soul. And what we've learned on this journey is that this is a mirror image of our own vessel. And we all come into this world as a broken vessel. And we're here to repair it. We're here to fill ourselves back up with everything we need. And the two most difficult things to achieve in this lifetime, the first is unconditional love for ourselves. We're not taught that and we cannot blame parents or grandparents or great, great grandparents because they did the best they could to raise us in the best way they knew how. We have to truly love who we are first so we can truly love another brother and sister. And what does it say in every spiritual or religious book or every culture in the world? It says, love thy brother and thy sister like you love yourself. But how can we truly love another if we don't love who we are first? And we must, we have to remember, I am that I am. Whether we say God, the universe, source, creator, a light, Allah, Buddha, Yahweh, whatever that is to an individual, we're all perfect, just who we are. We have to stop thinking or being programmed to be everyone else other than who we are. We are perfect. We have to start learning to speak our truth and be our authentic selves, which we don't know how. And we must share that with everyone. It's there. It's just coming from fear to not trust that. The second most difficult thing to achieve in this lifetime is forgiveness because we're all holding on to our past. And if we don't learn to forgive and let that go and send it with love, as hard as that may be, and believe me, I know how hard that is because we, they bullied me, they abused me, they broke my heart, they jipped me out of a business dealing, they cut me. We have to learn to let it go and send it with love, to empty our vessels of the things that no longer serve us and realize that everything in our lives has happened for us, not to us. It was a gift. It was a lesson. And sometimes, yes, these gifts and lessons are horrific, but it brings us to the next place in our lives and it makes us who we are today. And that is the wisdom we have all been given to share with another that's going through those things right now. Don't forget, we're all teachers. It's the wisdom we've all gained. But most importantly, we are all students until the day we transition. We never stop learning. And most importantly, we have to learn to forgive ourselves until we empty our own vessels of the things that no longer serve us. We cannot receive all of the new blessings and prayers that we ask for every day. And it's, I, I love this. It's that, wow. Most importantly, we have to stop being so tough on who we are to ourselves. We just have to let that go. And Marla and I always say, if you do not love yourself, well, I'm actually going to let Marla talk because I get so excited, but I, it's, 
it's very it's very exciting so i'll let you talk i get so excited i get so in this oh i just want to add to what scott's sharing that <laughs> if you don't have love for yourself then how can you give a love away if you don't have kindness for yourself how can you give kindness away and if you don't have peace for yourself how can you give peace away how can you have peace within your own family? How can you have peace within your community mm -hmm. or in the world if we don't start with ourselves first? And we believe these answers live within each of us waiting to be unlocked. That is the power of human intention. When we live with intention, we become transformed and we begin to attract all the things that we need to feel complete. When we live a life of intention, we live a meaningful and purposeful life. And if we're not living with intention, it's like getting into your car and driving without a destination. How do you know where you're going? And how do you know what you want when you get there? The human vessel must hold positive intention to rise to a higher purpose and a higher level of consciousness and carrying the intentions close to your heart. It will send the intentions out to the universe and shift the energy to create a better reality for yourself and for others. This tool will allow you to create the changes you want to see in life and within yourself and help strengthen the intentions you make, such as the power of unconditional love. There's both spiritual and physical power behind the act of intention. Mm -hmm. There are scientific studies that connect the power of human intention with the ability to affect inanimate mm -hmm. objects, other people, and even time and space. And we cannot overstate the power of the words we choose to identify ourselves, good or bad, and the attention stick is part of the journey to rewire our subconscious, to remove negative thoughts and energy and replace them with positive words of intention that are compatible with vibrant, grateful, beautiful life. Mm -hmm. And our intention, our intention is to help change and dissolve the significant challenges we face globally one life at a time by gifting intention sticks to at-risk children around the world. Because when we started to see the effect this was having on children and them understanding the pure genius of themselves that they are aware and that we can connect children to consciousness and give them back the tools that they need. And we live in unprecedented times. And as divine beings, we are creating our personal experiences our intentions create our experiences and anything we can think of, we can imagine, we can become. We have to stop believing in our own limitations that we are conditioned to believe. And when a child becomes at risk, they are cut off from consciousness and then nothing changes in the world. It remains the same. It's why we continue to see poverty and homelessness and, and hunger. We all have access to this universal consciousness. It's the same place where Mozart drew for his compositions. It's the same place where Einstein drew for his theory of relativity. But when children are at risk, they are cut off from the tools they need to make an impact in the world that they can be. So when they are cut off, nothing changes and the world remains the same. When we connect children to universal consciousness, they can change the world and have a long-term impact. Every day we are all affected by what is going on around the world. And rather than waiting for the world to come together for us, we must all come together for the world. And at-risk children are denied that opportunity. So our, our mission right now is, as I said, we're witnessing the tens of thousands of stories taking place around the world and not one story being the same. And the vision came to us about a year ago that as Marla was just sharing, we must reach every child in this world. And our mission on the new intention stick that we just created in Silicon, that we're going to start by gifting 1 million of the intention sticks to every child around the world. We've already translated it into 15 different languages. The last three were Hindi, Thai, and Swahili. And we're working, as I said, on Braille as we speak. And what, what I wanna share with the importance of this, it's actually an ancient Greek proverb that says a society grows great when old men plant trees in which they know the shade they will never sit in. 
And it is about the children and the grandchildren and the great, great grandchildren growing up, living a life of intention to eradicate all the negativity and the divisiveness that we are seeing in the world today. The, the world is following under the umbrella of fear and anger and ego, and the umbrella should be under the umbrella of love and kindness and happiness. Think about the state of a child. They do not know color, religion. They do not know politics. They do not know fear. They only know that we are the same. We are living in a life of bliss and happiness and joy. They're not worrying about our past and they're not worrying about tomorrow. We have to remember to start living every day to the fullest. Every day is a gift. Every day is a birthday. We're not promised tomorrow. And we were all brought here to take the gifts, the platforms, the abundance, the knowledge, our talents to impact another soul, a soul to soul connection. Because actually in the Talmud, it says, when you save one soul, you save the world entirely. Because all of our souls in this world are connected. We are a part of a co collective consciousness. We just forgot. We were programmed to think differently that someone's better because of color, religion, politics, money. It's, as I said earlier, there's no one better in this world than anyone else and there's no one worse. We are here to live as one. We are here to awaken all of these beautiful souls and unify in a time that is so needed. And we're doing it, we're not talking about it. And that's why we say everyone here on this beautiful platform that Dr. Ubander created is just that to awaken every soul on this planet, to understand we are all brothers and sisters and that we're here to love each and every one of us the same. And we have to put aside the past and the, and the traditions or the fear that was brought into us. It's time to make that change and we're doing it. And it's such a gift, it's such a blessing. And like I said, it is, it's about now. And that's why we know we, we are so blessed and so honored to be sharing this journey with all of you here. And there's so much more, like I said, at the beginning of this conversation, if we were really to start sharing what's going on, we would need a sleepover and a long weekend to get through this. And if more, we, again, this is about us collectively. This has nothing to do with Marla and I. And for those that want to understand more about the Tree of Life and the Intention Stick, of course, please message us, go on to uh, treeoflifemovement.com. It's a beautiful journey. But again, we have to all realize we have to first take care of ourselves. We have to start filling ourselves with everything we need, the love, the kindness, the peace, the gratitude, so that we can continue to give that to others. Again, that's why we are here. It is to touch as many souls in this lifetime as we possibly can. And we're here to do this together. And uh, there's just so much love and gratitude in Marla and my heart right now. And what Marla and I would love to end on um, is that before we give an intention to stick to someone, whether they come to the office, whether we speak in front of 300 people will have the entire room stand up and hold hands and they'll hold the intention sticks. Or even if we send the intention stick around the world as Dr. Uganda and his beautiful wife received theirs and we did these blessings for them, we're gonna do the same thing for you. So what Marla and I would love for everyone to do right now is to hold your monitor and to hold or your phone Take and one. like we are one, we are one, but we're going to do this together. These blessings, these intentions are set right now for every one of our brothers and sisters around the world that they may receive that light and love. So I'm going to have everyone close their eyes just for a moment and take a deep breath in just to ground ourselves and be at peace. first and foremost, that everyone receive blessings of health and kindness and gratitude and light and love and everything each and every one of you needs in your lives right now to fill up your beautiful hearts and souls 
with unconditional love, which will allow you to fully heal, which will allow you to continue to help so many more brothers and sisters heal, which will unify all mankind and bring us back together as one so we may all see heaven on earth as it is here now and see your true purpose in life and be your authentic selves. Mm. With so much light and love, Marla and I are sending all of our dear brothers and sisters around this world blessings and intentions of gratitude, light, and love. We love you. We love you. We love you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Thank you. Thank you.